This is Jay Big Ticket 23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to upgrade and replace your power supply in an HP Z420 workstation. Um, so if you just had a bad power supply and you're having trouble locating a replacement power supply, or in our case, we're replacing this power supply just because we need more wattage for our graphics card. So uh, we had a little bit of a dilemma. We had an EVGA uh, NVIDIA GTX 1080 graphics card, and, and, and the card can draw upwards of 300 watts uh, from our power supply. Uh, so when we were giving it heavy usage, it was uh, causing our HP Z420 to either freeze or just uh, turn off randomly. Um, and I guess it wasn't randomly. It was when we were using a lot of wattage. Um, so what, we're, what we did is we got a EVGA 700-watt power supply, and uh, we installed it with some um, other adapters that we needed, uh, which I'll show you in this video. Um, before we start our install, I um, would encourage you to go to greenpcgamers.com, click on the blog, and search Z420. Uh, there's going to be an option that pops up called Z420 Gaming Computer and Other Upgrades. Um, this page is an awesome resource if you have a Z420 workstation. It'll show you tons of upgrades and other videos on how to install the components. Um, check it out. It's free to use and has a bunch of awesome ideas to upgrade your system. All right, so let's take a look at the video. Um, we have our Z420 workstation. We have our EVGA 700 watt power supply. And then we have this really important feature, uh, this little cable that we got off Amazon, which we'll post in the, in the um, description below. Um, this is our 24 pin to 18 pin adapter. And you're going to need this if you're going to install an EVGA power supply or any other power supply um, into the system um, because it does have a proprietary plug that's 18 pins. Um, something that's not um, in this first part of the video here is uh, we do use some 3M. Uh, they're like these uh, Velcro strips, and they are awesome. Uh, we'll get to that further in the video. So there's our 24-pin uh, to 18-pin adapter. Here's our 700-watt power supply. And this is what we are going to install to give us a little bit more wattage. All right, so here's what they're called, the command strips. Now, these are capable of holding up to 12 pounds each, which is insane. So the reason why we need to use these is because this power supply, we'll go back a little bit, this power supply is not the same size as the existing HP power supply. So we needed a way to mount this power supply, and uh, you could use other Velcro. Um, in our case, we're using command strips. Because, um, like I said, they hold up to 12 pounds each. Uh, we're going to end up doing three of them, 36 pounds. All right, so as you saw, there's this little bar here that we had to bend down to be able to mount the, the replacement power supply into the slot. Now, if, you, if, you're, if you're just upgrading from like a 400 to a 600 watt HP power supply, well, then you, you can just leave this the way it is. But in our case, we're using an ATX power supply. Uh, we've bent it down. So... Basically, I'm not showing you the part where we actually bend it down, but basically what we did is we um, used a pliers to bend it down a little bit, and then I went and got a, a, a mallet, and I smacked it down. It was hard to show in the video because the mallet covered the whole thing. Um, but basically, we're pushing this little, this little bracket right here down um, flush so that when we do put our power supply in with those command strips, we can actually mount it up inside there. So you see we added one more command strip. So basically, you put each command strip... Uh, you stick them together. Once they're stuck together, then you can pull out the sticky side on the other end. And we already put the sticky side on the power supply. In. Now, these are cool because unlike Velcro, you can pull that strip and actually pull these off of the power supply or the chassis if you decided to move them to another system without damaging the part. So these are a little bit better than regular Velcro, and they hold an insane amount of weight for how small they are. So I definitely encourage you to use the uh, 3M command strips for this purpose if you're going to do this install. All right, so there's another another little metal bracket here that we're not going to bend up, but we're just going to mount the power supply behind it. Now, you could bend that up, but it's really tough to get the power supply flush. So we're just going to mount it a little bit behind it. It's not going to look perfect like the OEM power supply, but like I said, we got 36 pounds worth of holding on here by these command strips. And it's, it's inset a little bit, but this is the price we pay to upgrade the wattage on this system. All right, so you can see how it's holding it. It's, it's doing a great job. 
when you actually plug your power supply or your power cable into it, you want to hold it um, tight just so it doesn't come loose, but it shouldn't with those uh, three command strips. All right, so that's what it looks like when it's installed. A little bit different than the regular power supply, but it, it'll work. All right, so here's our 24-pin to 18-pin adapter. We've already plugged it in. So this power supply, again, has a 24-pin. We need an adapter. This is like our main power for this motherboard. And that 18-pin plugs right into the motherboard right here. If you don't buy the adapter, you're not going to be able to install this power supply. It's as simple as that. And we'll, like, we'll post the part number in the description. Um, and then here's our 8-pin power that we need. Now, the way the EVGA power supply works is it has two four pins because this power supply is compatible with some of the uh, lower end workstations that only have a single four pin for the processor. So um, we'll go ahead and pop those right into place. They combine together to make an eight pin. All right, now we need to plug in our power for our optical drive and our hard drive. And there's plenty of options for power. I think there's um, three for the optical drive and there's three for the hard drives. So uh, we were saying that when we installed the GTX 1080 graphics card, it was causing a system to shut off. Something that we're not showing in this video is we did convert our uh, 7.2K SATA drive to a solid state drive for less power draw. So that's also going to help us in our case. Um, and so there we just plugged into our solid state drive. All right. So another cool thing about this uh, power supply is it has a eight pin, two eight pin power adapters for a graphics card. The GTX 1080 that we're installing only requires one, and so that installs like so. All right, we did use that uh, that clip right there to, to clean up our cables a little bit. You could do a better job of cleaning up the other cables. Uh, we just kind of stuffed them underneath our optical drive. All right, so at this point, everything is plugged in. I'm going to pop our side panel back on, and at that point, you have installed your power supply. So you should be able to just go and plug it in like normal. You're gonna have the extra wattage um, and then you're not gonna have to worry about the system shutting off uh, if you install the GTX 1080 graphics card or anything uh, below a GTX 1080. Now, if you're gonna put a 1080 Ti in the system, most of those cards will fit. You will definitely wanna go with the 800 watt power supply or more if you're gonna do a 1080 Ti. Um, although as you might have the similar issue um, EVGA does sell 750s and 800 watt power supplies as well, so um, just get the upgraded model and, and this, this video will apply. Um, if this video was helpful to you, uh, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Also, uh, we do monthly giveaways on GreenPCGamers.com. All you have to do is go to GreenPCGamers.com, no space, uh, go to our Facebook page and like our Facebook page. That's how we do our giveaways. Um, thank you so much for watching.